Multiple threats looming as the tropics heat up to start hurricane season. At the same time, the jet stream dipping out west, producing severe weather and likely days of it, including a tornado threat for many over the coming stretch. Welcome in, everybody. Great to see you on this Tuesday, June 3rd it is now. And hopefully we're having an all right start to the month out there. And uh, I'll tell you, it's the start of hurricane season as well. And it's acting like it as we do have our first area of interest uh, or kind of area to watch here in the Atlantic of the 2025 hurricane season. We'll talk about that in today's video. We'll also break down a severe weather threat on the way for many folks. We're going to get rounds of storms, including the potential for tornadoes over portions of the country. I'll tell you who could see that and how high the threat is in today's video. If you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Great way to stay up to date here uh, as we continue tracking multiple threats. And all things considered, June is generally one of the more quiet months. So I also want to say thank you to everyone who is watching uh, during a time of the year that maybe we don't have snow or big hurricanes quite yet, uh, but still dealing with impactful weather that could affect your forecast and potentially even those weekend plans coming up as I am watching a storm system uh, that could uh, disrupt uh, that time frame. Alrighty, folks, let's go ahead and dive on into it and start talking weather. We'll start with the tropics today. I'm uh, going to switch up the order a little bit. I figure that might be good for you, might mix it up a little bit. And you can see on satellite loop, this is our infrared, a uh, long wave infrared. You can see we do have a cluster of of some storminess down over portions of the Gulf, the Caribbean, and uh, out towards portions of the Atlantic here from the Bahamas back down towards Cuba and over much of South Florida. Just kind of disorganized showers and storms. And uh, it's just a reminder that we are getting to that time of the year where the tropics begin to heat up. It's definitely looking like that on satellite. As you can see, that area of disorganized weather that could potentially uh, try to become our A name storm here over the next week. Chances are low, but we will talk about it uh, again here coming up in just a moment. But before we get there, let's also take a look here over the central United States. Yeah, a stormy weather pattern here from the northern plains all the way down to the Gulf Coast. And that's going to continue as the jet stream continues to kind of dip and amplify over the western United States, bringing these pockets of showers, storms and even some supercells and clusters of stronger storms into the forecast. And the Storm Prediction Center does have multiple areas to watch. We'll break down the model guidance for that as well coming up here in just a moment. But let's get back to that area of interest in the Atlantic here really quickly. And you can see uh, we do have a pocket to watch off the Carolina coastline here over about the next five days or seven days. Uh, you can see only a 10% chance of development. I'll tell you, either way, whether this gets a name or not, the forecast is really going to remain the same, and that's increased rainfall chances here from uh, Florida up through coastal Georgia and into the coastal sections of the Carolinas, especially uh, kind of uh, along the I-95 corridor, but even up towards the I-85 corridor could see some rain, and uh, we'll kind of break that down for you in today's video. But again, a sign that the tropics are heating up and getting a little bit more active here as well. So let's swing on over. Let's take a look at some models and some ensembles for this potential tropical disturbance. All right, here's the latest European model run for this uh, kind of disturbance. And we're going to keep really just the entire eastern United States in frame here, but we're really just going to focus on the tropical disturbance for this segment. And then we'll eventually talk about those storms you see back out west here uh, coming on later on in the video. So let's move it ahead here. Uh, this, this afternoon and evening, you can see we've got a lot of showers and storms here over the Sunshine State. That's that tropical disturbance, again, bringing moisture and lift with it throughout this portion of the atmosphere from the Sunshine State, eventually up north as well. And you can see as we time this out for you, again, this is this evening, overnight tonight on uh, Tuesday. But as we get into Wednesday afternoon, you can see that storminess then pulling northward. Georgia, uh, the low country of South Carolina, getting in on some of the rain from the storm system and kind of just lingering around for quite some time. And check it out, by the time we get to Thursday afternoon, we've got a little L popping up on the map. That's that low pressure, uh, not to, an extremely deep low pressure, not a very strong one, but unsettled enough that, again, rainfall will be the biggest concern here in the forecast with this storm system. Uh, you can see it really riding right up the Carolina coastline. Now, this could be a little bit more offshore if it's over the Gulf Stream. Higher likelihood that maybe this strengthens enough and closes off enough that it could become uh, a hybrid storm, probably more of a subtropical system, meaning it is 
partially tropical and partially uh, more of a mid-latitude cyclone. But uh, either way, again, rainfall will be the threat from this winds. Not expecting anything surge. Not expecting anything. Sure, it could aggravate high tide a little bit maybe, uh, especially with maybe some freshwater rainfall coming down at the same time that you get a little bit, just a little bit extra push from the ocean uh, out of really any low pressure system here uh, along the coastline. So we'll watch for that. But again, freshwater rain will be the big threat here. Uh, and uh, not to the point that I think we're going to see massive flooding, but definitely could interrupt those late week and early weekend plans. Again, this is Thursday afternoon. By the time we get on into Friday afternoon, still hanging around, trying to get back off the coast and hopefully kind of pushing out of here that by the time we get to that Friday, Saturday, Sunday weekend beach time, uh, hopefully the system will start to pull away, but you'll notice still active weather into the interior part of the country that could definitely uh, flare up some showers and storms as well. So uh, a pretty um, not complicated per se, but active weekend forecast here for a lot of folks. And again, as we get to the severe weather segment, uh, that'll be brought up even more uh, here for you. But again, this is Friday afternoon. Keep it going here into uh, this is Saturday and into Sunday. You'll notice that kind of moves out of here, but then uh, becomes more mid-latitude per se and even pulls some moisture back down behind it uh, that again could interrupt those weekend plans. So let's take a look at this from the European ensembles. Uh, again, not a huge threat of this becoming anything serious by any means, but uh, the European models and its ensemble members do have a couple members that spin this up into something. Again, whether this has a name or not is really just going to affect the record books. It will not affect your impacts. You're going to see the same thing I just showed you. That's active rainfall from now through at least Thursday and Friday uh, from the storm system itself. And then again, could linger with more um, uh, upper level mischief behind it here by the weekend. But you can see some members kind of form this along the South Carolina coastline, pull it up through the Outer Banks and then out to sea by the weekend and into early next week. So that's the latest on the tropics. Let's swing back on over now and take a look at the mid-latitudes with that potential severe weather as an active jet stream continues over much of the continental United States. Well, you can see it already on radar imagery. We've got some rain up into the Midwest and out through the Great Plains. This is kind of uh, the ongoing severe weather season that we've seen. Had a very active May. I can tell you again, I was out there chasing for two weeks straight and uh, there was basically one day that went by that I didn't see a storm. So uh, this is just a continuation of what we had in May, but could definitely flare up to a higher level here. I think over the next week or so as the jet stream really starts to play havoc and we get some increased lift in the upper level, some increased wind shear. That's a recipe for potential supercells, which obviously are going to have a higher end threat than just your multi-cell or single cell uh, storm. So again, we've got rain already out there. You can see that here from Minnesota all the way down towards Kansas and even into Oklahoma and Texas. Um, this is a byproduct of what's happening in the upper levels. You can see it quite well. This is this afternoon. We got this big upper level dip in the jet stream, the core of it up into Canada, but enough of it sneaking down into the United States. We've got this um, surface low pressure and kind of this frontal system passing on through. That's creating enough lift for some severe weather through the region in the east. It's a big old ridge, and that's what uh, has kind of trapped our tropical disturbance in Florida down under it, but uh, generally warm in the east, stormier out into the central United States. Now, watch what happens uh, as we time this out for you here on our vorticity map. Again, this is upper level energy and spin. Uh, oftentimes what causes these storm systems uh, to deepen or develop a little bit more uh, readily here. So uh, we've got plenty of energy over the central United States right now. As we go through the week, uh, it calms down maybe a little bit, still could see some active weather by tomorrow. Uh, but by the time I think we get to Thursday here, you're going to see more of these little short wave pieces of energy kind of along this uh, general active jet pattern that are going to work on through and increase severe weather potential with them as they kick up a little bit more lift and spin in the atmosphere. All right, now that's going to be one storyline. Watch what happens by the weekend, though. Uh, look at this area up into Canada. That dives on down. This is Saturday into Sunday. That could be a big-time story maker for the eastern United States about a week from now. Uh, so now, till then, we're still going to get these little shortwave pieces of energy into the plains. That's going to increase severe weather potential. Uh, but... Um, I really think it's the longer range pattern. About a week from now, we see more active weather begin to work on in. Uh, you can see this here even from the Storm Prediction Center forecast for today. Just a slight risk up, not a huge deal, uh, but that is a level two out of five chance of severe weather, including a tornado potential. Again, not very high, but anyone in green here from Dallas, Fort Worth, up towards OKC, Tulsa, Kansas City, and even up towards portions of Illinois, southern Wisconsin, 
and extreme southeastern Iowa there, not far from Cedar Rapids, could see a quick spin-up tornado today. Main threats, though, will be strong straight line winds there highlighted on the map now, as well as large hail. So uh, nothing too different than what we've seen over the past couple of weeks out this way. You get into tomorrow, again, tomorrow a bit more of a quiet day, two little marginal risks that we're going to watch for severe weather, uh, but nothing that's jumping out or screaming huge outbreak over the next two days, but could still see a strong to severe storms. All right, let's swing on over now, take a look at some model guidance for the next two days, time it out for you, and then continue that severe weather discussion as things could ramp up later on this week. All right, here's the latest high resolution rapid refresh model. Again, uh, kind of one of our better models, generally speaking, depending on who you ask, but I quite like it. I think it does a relatively good job, especially compared to some of the other models I could show you. So here we go. This is this afternoon. You can see just that storm in the southwest. It really going to be more linear than anything today, but do watch this evening. Uh, you see some pockets of storms try to break out ahead of the main line. These could be a little bit more super cellular in nature. That could increase really all hazards, uh, but uh, especially could increase the hail threat here if we get any of these storms out ahead of the main line. A little bit more discreet, maybe a little bit more of an unstable environment that they're working with and uh, could increase the tornado threat a little bit as well. Today, though, really more of a squall line kind of day, a QLCS means wind, uh, strong straight line winds, that is uh, going to be the biggest threat today on the map to worry about, and pretty heavy rainfall, a lot of lightning, a lot of thunder, all the good stuff. Also, down south towards Florida, notice uh, we've got plenty of rain today into the overnight, and here we go, waking up tomorrow on Wednesday, notice that Gulf energy and that uh, kind of Atlantic energy lifting northwards, increasing rainfall chances through Georgia, the low country of South Carolina, Again, the Florida Peninsula is staying quite wet. And then tomorrow afternoon, we've still got that disturbance out into the plains, working towards the Midwest and into the Ohio Valley. Uh, tomorrow, again, just a marginal risk of severe weather for many folks. That's a level one out of five, not a huge deal. Uh, but we could see some pockets of uh, a couple stronger storms trying to get going in that little segment. Same story down to the south and east. I would not be surprised to see uh, a couple areas, maybe some quick uh, downbursts uh, of energy, meaning strong straight line winds. And potentially, I think by the time we go later on into Wednesday, uh, you can see and even into this is Thursday morning as far out as the model goes. Uh, notice this surface load down over South Carolina. Uh, a lot of uh, wind shear generally associated with these sorts of things. So uh, we'll need to watch Thursday, I think, along the PD into the Grand Strand up into southeastern North Carolina. Maybe a higher end tornado threat than um, uh, than zero, we'll say. Again, not uh, high per se, but uh, enough that I think it's worth mentioning. We'll talk about it a little bit more as we get closer. We'll keep uh, following that potential for you, but uh, definitely something to watch. Then you can see by Thursday, uh, still just scattered storms into the Ohio Valley and back into the Central Plains as well, seeing some of that active weather. And that's going to really set the stage, I think, for later this week when things really ramp up in a bigger way. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and give you the latest on the rest of the week ahead. One great parameter to look at when forecasting severe weather is the bulk wind shear. This is often useful to determine what kind of storms are we going to see. Are we going to see little single cells that you often see in the summertime or those pulse storms? Are we going to see multi-cells, which are generally more maybe of a squall line or a cluster of storms? Or are we going to see supercells, uh, which obviously are kind of the higher end threshold there for tornadoes, large hail, and even a straight line winds? Well, the brighter the color and the higher the number on the map, the higher chance you're going to see supercells. And watch what happens throughout the week. And I'll add, just because you have the higher numbers does not mean you're going to see supercells. There are areas that uh, have a lot of this bulk shear that maybe don't have instability. But notice what happens either way. Uh, later on this week, we get a pretty big increase in wind shear and bulk wind shear from the surface about half way up through the atmosphere here over the southern plains from New Mexico up into the panhandles and even into Kansas. Um, and you can see this is Thursday. That kind of continues parking over that area. And it's just day after day of this bulk shear. And even tries to work east a little bit. Check it out. Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi by Friday, maybe getting in on that uh, incre uh, increase, excuse me, uh, wind shear parameter there and just parks itself over Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, uh, Missouri through the Ozarks there, again, Arkansas, and then tries to work into the southeast a little bit. And by the weekend into early next week, yeah, check it out. We've got uh, that big storm system. Uh, we're going to definitely need to take a deeper look at here in the coming days. Still about a week out, but just know that it could increase active weather, including severe weather, as well as um, just unsettled weather. We'll need to watch out for that uh, by the time we get to next week. We'll talk about it more in the coming days, but just know uh, you're, you're going to want to come back through the next couple of days ahead to mention that. But uh, the big thing I want you to take away from this map is a lot of uh, wind shear 
increasing over the southern plains here by the time we get through the second half of this week. And I uh, guess what the Storm Prediction Center sees it as well. Here's the day three outlook. Uh, so that's going to be for your Thursday. Not a huge threat Thursday, but we do have one area in the northeast. Uh, again, a little bit of enhanced wind shear up there, maybe a couple stronger storms. And then you could see the Southern Plains come roaring back to life. Amarillo, Lubbock back out towards OKC, Woodward, Dodge City, uh, Liberal back over towards Wichita, Tulsa. Yeah, the normal trouble spots out here could see strong to severe storms for your Thursday. We're not done. Check out Friday. Uh, all of Oklahoma, much of Arkansas through the Ozarks, western Tennessee, southwestern Kentucky there, and even in northern Mississippi and extreme northwestern Alabama could see strong to severe storms uh, by the time we get towards later this week. And we're not done by the time we start the weekend. Could continue to see in this area that we have that increased wind shear could have stronger storms. And we could see some supercells out of this. Could see higher in tornado threat uh, than maybe we're going to see today or tomorrow. I think that does ramp up by the end of the week. Also strong straight line winds and large hail. Uh, will definitely be something we need to watch out for. So uh, that'll be the big storyline here, I think, uh, through the rest of this week. I know we're tired of talking about severe weather. Uh, before you know it, though, I'm going to be mentioning Ring of Fire, I'm sure, by the time we get to July. And then, obviously, the tropics going to pick up as well. But we got to get through this kind of last stretch of severe weather season, uh, at least the, the peak of it, per se. Uh, final thing I'll show you in today's video is uh, the parameters for severe weather from the European Ensemble. I showed you the bulk shear. I showed you the SBC outlook. Uh, here's what the models say for Thursday afternoon. You can see the eight kind of bullseye over the Texas Panhandle, southwestern uh, Kansas, southeastern Colorado, and then over even portions of Oklahoma. That's by Thursday. Here's Friday afternoon. Uh, again, kind of lining up pretty well with the SPC outlook there, Oklahoma, back through the Ozarks, Western Kentucky, Tennessee, and Northern Alabama, almost, uh, or Northern uh, Mississippi and Alabama, I guess, um, almost lines up perfectly with the SPC outlook there for your Friday, and then you get into Saturday, yeah, we're not done, it's still the same areas, just having this strong upper level flow to increase that severe weather potential, and it really lingers even into the weekend here, and then maybe calming down a little bit, although next week's storm system that works, and we'll see if that can increase severe weather potential uh, up into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. We'll track that for you, obviously, and keep you up to date. All right, folks, so that's all I got for you on this Tuesday. Uh, again, we're going to keep on trucking along here through the more, we'll call it boring time of the year. I think June, honestly, uh, or July, you could argue, I would say is the most quiet month of the year weather-wise, at least on the channel. Uh, it obviously depends where you live, but winter, we've got winter storms. In the fall, we've got hurricanes. Um, and then in the spring, we have a lot of severe weather. But right now, kind of that in-between period from all the months, uh, so uh, a little bit less to talk about. But uh, again, appreciate you folks still tuning in either way. Alrighty, folks, y'all have a great one. Stay safe and I'll see you all tomorrow.